Folks, you should be able to hear us quite well, but if you are interested, please tune your car radio to 99.7, and uh, it will also be broadcast through your car radio. But we should be good as long as everybody's outside, but you're more than welcome to give it a try and see how it goes. I, I should also like to mention the live stream is now up and running if you want to text uh, those that are at home to let them know that the live stream is up and running we've got a great signal uh, and we're going to have uh, different cameras so i think it should be really nice for those that are home to watch it again the live stream is now up and running and your car radio can certainly be tuned to 99.7 
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 69th commencement of Lewiston Porter Central Schools and Lewiston Porter High School. Would everybody please rise and join senior vocalist Lauren Egger, Nathan Fournier, and Olivia Ponticelli in the singing of our Star Spangled Banner. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner for the land of the free and the home of the brave, of the brave. Just beautiful. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Casari, and I'm the superintendent, the very proud superintendent of Lewis and Porter Central Schools. And uh, I'm a bit choked up right now, to be totally honest with you, because I never thought we would get to this, this opportunity, but we did. It wasn't perfect, but then this world of COVID, nothing's really perfect. So we make our way through it. But I'm so proud and happy that we were able to come together as a community in a small little bunch, three times, to honor these incredible young people. And uh, it's, a, it's a real pleasure to uh, introduce 
the individuals that I have on stage with me right now, and I'll ask them to stand when I call their name. First of all, would you please welcome, and certainly uh, when I hired him in February, on February 1st, uh, no one could have possibly imagined where it would have ended up. So I give him a tremendous amount of credit. Would you please uh, give a warm welcome for Mr. Bradley Rolls, high school principal. Please welcome, she keep, keeps us very informed as a school community. Please welcome the Board of Education President, Mrs. Jody Reardon. Please welcome uh, Mr. John Everett, the Assistant Principal at the high school. Please welcome a dear friend, and this will be his last commencement with us, and he has uh, offered himself in a number of different roles, uh, going back to his uh, when he was the commander of our Air Force Junior ROTC program here at Lewiston Porter, and now is the Vice President of the Board of Education, retired Colonel Lance Dickinson. And would you also please give a warm welcome to the Class of 2020, the Class President, Mr. Joseph Eden. You are going to hear many speeches this morning, or this afternoon, and all of those speeches will have a theme, and that theme is perseverance. That theme is hope. That theme is that we are in this together. I, uh, I could have never imagined over the, uh, when we started school in September, that we would be in, in this position today. But we are, and as a community, I'm so proud of the way that we have handled it and the way that we have come together. I was, uh, one of the things that I tried to do was be as communicative as possible with this entire community. But you'll notice that I always included the students in my communications. And I was specifically focusing in on those communications to these fine young people here, the class of 2020. I needed you to understand what was happening because you are the pulse, the heartbeat of what we do. You are the pulse, the heartbeat of the students of this community. And I'm so appreciative of the maturity and the just commitment that all of you made to the great change that we were forced to confront as we uh, opened up uh, this virtual schooling on March 16th. It's hard to even imagine. We often talk about leadership and how important leadership is. And that is so true in these troubling times. The world has changed. In three months, the world has changed dramatically. And now you enter into that world. And what makes me so proud and so happy and gives me such great hope is the fact that you, class of 2020, you are entering into that new world. We need you. We need you so desperately. We need you to show commitment to yourselves, to your family, to your friends, and to be the role models for the choices, the hard choices that are gonna to have to be made. I am so very proud of you. I'm so very honored to be your superintendent. And I can only wish you luck, happiness, and complete fulfillment as you leave Lewiston Porter and move on to the rest of your lives. I'd like to leave you with these words, and they are from the great patriot, Thomas Paine. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in the crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands by it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us, that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is the dearness only that gives us everything its value. Heaven knows how to put a proper price upon its goods, and it would be strange indeed, if so celestial an article as freedom should not be highly rated. 
these are the times that try men's souls and women. But I know that you will confront, confront them and be the leaders of the next generation that we need. God bless you all. I'd now like to introduce our salutatorian, Mr. Eric Smith. Good afternoon. Welcome to class advisors, Mrs. Skimmon and Ms. Burdick, the valedictorian, Gabe Steiner, President Joe Beatty, Vice President Ella Massaro and myself, Secretary Jordan Casey, Treasurer Al Schultz, Director of Fundraisings, Grace Barner and Jack Dunn, Director of Social Relations, Jonathan Went, Claire Skronsky, and again, Mr. Kasseri, Mrs. Reardon, Mr. Rolls, Mr. Ubert, other distinguished guests, friends, and family. I also found it fairly essential to give a shout out to a few individuals of high distinction, including Justin Frank Schultz, Alexander David Mills, Jack Davity Dunn, the amazing National Anthem Singers, the Niagara Catholic Alumni Association, and Grace Barner's dog, Minnie. With that, I first wanna thank some people for all that they've done for me over the past several years and what better way to do it than after months of isolation due to a global pandemic. Thankfully, this doesn't have to be virtual. I've been advised to give a word of wisdom, so as Mr. Thompson said, this will be a great story to tell your grandkids. Given all of that, I'm truly honored to be given this opportunity to speak on behalf of my class. I want to start by giving my regards to some of the best teachers and staff around and my appreciation of their talent not only to teach students, but give guidance and inspiration. I cannot stress enough their ability to make such an immense impact on the students and community that is Lewis and Porter. I sincerely thank my fantastic class advisors and fellow class officers for working with administration to help allow this and other senior dedicated events to occur. I think we are all grateful to be here today considering all that has happened. Finally, I found it most essential to thank my amazing sister and parents. I'm so blessed to have such caring, dedicated, hardworking, and inspiring people in my life, and I'm so glad to be a part of this family. I reiterate my gratitude to you all. Being able to join the Lewport School community in seventh grade was one of the best things that has happened to me. Granted, I was able to see and do some pretty crazy things. I was able to travel to Asia twice for the International Student Science Fair, or the ISSF as Mrs. Hinchliffe and I like to call it, solely to present about what would happen when toxic chemicals were mixed with self-grown mushrooms and plants. Yes, it was as weird as it sounds. I was able to be a part of the class that made it to the finals for Powder Puff three years in a row, which I would call a rare achievement if it weren't for the fact that we were shadowing the class of 2018 that actually won three times in a row. Not to throw any shade, but at least we surpass them in the cheerleading portion, as nothing can top Fergalicious or Drake and Josh. It was always fun to sit in the band room, holding my 50-pound tuba, waiting to be told to hold the tuning note until I got lightheaded, or for Joe Beatty to be told to put his phone away for the nth time in our only 40-minute rehearsal. I was able to be a part of the swim team that grew over six years, going from having less than 10 members, half of whom could barely swim, to winning 10 out of the 12 meets in my senior season. We were somehow able to do all of this while having our pool on the second floor, but I guess that just made us one level higher than everyone else. Maybe our success resulted from us getting superhuman strength due to that minor chemical spill in our pool two years ago. Believe me, I've watched X-Men. In my time at the school, I was able to witness some of my friends go on to sectionals, states, and then winning and even going on to nationals only further supporting my X-Men theory. All in all, what better way to spend your high school experience than at a place where you can do all of that and more, wearing a color that technically doesn't go well with anything, and only running on orange cat coffee, favorites pizza, Hibbert's ice cream, and a wide variety of other restaurants no one has heard of outside of a 20 mile radius. In all seriousness, I love Lewport. 
I'm more than glad to have had an opportunity to be a part of this amazing class. While we have been without a doubt successful in our achievements in education, we are known for so much more. As much as I can say that the Loopwork curriculum has taught me just about everything I need to know for pursuing a higher education, I can also proudly reflect on the people I've had the honor to be learning with for the past few years and what they've taught me. We are not pushovers and we always stand up for what is right without hesitation. Clicks aren't really a thing in our class, which is partly due to our refusal to be placed into categories or stereotypes. We are creative and strong-willed, empathetic and enthusiastic, passionate and motivated, and overall great people to be around. As much as I can say we refuse to admit it, we really, really care about each other. We like to strive for personal success, but we more so want to succeed together. It is rare to find so many leaders and so much potential among such a small group of people. As much as we have been impacted over the last few months, one thing is of utmost clarity. We are not defined by disease. We have worked way too hard to get to where we are today, and as much as we don't deserve all that has happened to us, we must not forget to celebrate both our individual journeys and our combined success. My senior quote is from one of the best rock songs of all time, Don't Stop Believing." I know many of you may have been expecting something from Bohemian Rhapsody, but unfortunately, I cannot do the best rock song of all time justice without a piano in front of me. The quote is, oh, the movie never ends. It goes on and on and on and on. Given that, I hope to spread the idea that our time at Loopport was more than great, but this is only the beginning of our amazing lives. To the class of 2020, if I leave one thing with you all, besides taking the time to thank whoever has pushed you the most to get to where you are today, it is this. While all of your movies go on and on into the future, I only ask that you don't leave the Loopport community behind, but you take it with you and hold on to it forever. I'm excited to see what you can accomplish, and I hope you know that if you were ever to return, you'll be welcomed with open arms. With that, I sincerely congratulate you for your success. Thank you for attending and declare, don't ever stop believing. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Mrs. Jody Reardon, the president of the Loopport Board of Education. May you live in interesting times. Whether this is a proverb or a curse has long been argued. But however you weigh it, we are living in interesting times. Times of pestilence and plague, civil unrest, racial and gender inequality, economic hardship, times of danger and uncertainty. But times as these also prove to be the most creative of any time in the history of mankind. And everyone here will ultimately be judged will ultimately judge himself on the effort he has contributed to building a new world society and the extent to which his ideals and goals have shaped that effort. I quote Robert F. Kennedy in 1966, and I challenge you, class of 2020, to rise to the occasion. You enter the annals of history, a graduating class of women and men coming of age at a crucial time. Generations before you have lived through pandemic, through dramatic instances of human suffering, they rose to greatness. Hardships often prepare ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny. So far, you have not been called to action. You have instead been grounded just as you were ready to fly. But the class of 2020 cannot, will not, be defined by what was missed. What will define you is what you gained, what you learned, what you do next, what you take away from this and build. Adversity does not build character, it reveals it. It has shown in your resilience, patience, kindness, grace. It has shown in the strength of your friendships, the depth of your empathy, and your bond as a class. The Rona did not define the character of this class, it revealed it. Remember, hindsight is 2020. May you look back on these interesting times and realize the opportunity. Remember fondly the gift of time with your family, the camaraderie of your friends, how the entire Lewis and Porter community came together to recognize and celebrate your accomplishments in new ways. 
how unexpected adversity brought unexpected joys. Class of 2020, take everything you learned in your years at Lewiston Porter, everything you learned through these interesting times, and go change the world. On behalf of the Lewiston Porter Board of Education, congratulations to each of you. May you know happiness and success. May you live in interesting times. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce the valedictorian of the class of 2020, Mr. Gabriel Steiner. Technical difficulties, excuse me a moment. I'm expecting that wasn't the best place to keep my script. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all positive ages, as the valedictorian at the Lewis and Porter High School class of 2020, I would like to formally say to all of you, hi. Sorry, I just figured that since I couldn't come up with a good start to the speech, the best thing to do would be to make a deliberately awful one. Anyway, I have a story for you. Today is June 1st. I've just finished my AP physics exam. I had to retake it because my internet died the first time. I get a text message. It's a message from the school band director, Ms. Burdick, to both me and Eric Smith, the salutatorian. It goes something like this. Hi, guys. I want to check in on how your valedictorian slash salutatorian speeches are doing. Niagara Fiat is doing a special feature, etc., etc. Anyway, Eric responds with, it shouldn't be a problem. I'll try to get it to you by June 6th. I respond with, we needed speeches. You see, this was back when everything was still up in the air with regards to how graduation was going to work. Last time I'd heard, the graduation ceremony was either called off entirely or at least postponed for quite a while. So between that, the APs I'd just gotten done with, the project that I'd just started getting assigned, and the new job that I was starting the very next day, making the auditorium speech was between global thermonuclear war and summertime blizzard on my list of concerns. Although, given how this year's been going, neither of those are completely off the table. So, on top of everything else I was dealing with, and I had to write an entire valedictorian speech which by extension also meant that I had to figure out how to write about Victorian speech, since I had absolutely no idea what that entailed. Needless to say, my hopes were not high. But as you can tell by the fact that I'm here, given my Victorian speech, I managed to do so. I eventually figured out the things on my own, i.e. read a bunch of guides and watch recordings of speeches, mustered up enough motivation to stop procrastinating, and typed out these very words I'm speaking to you right now. Yes, these ones. These ones too. And why did I put this in the script again? Anyway, one of the main things I definitely didn't learn from reading online tutorials was that a valedictorian speech should have a theme. And with everything that's happened thus far, I can think of no theme more fitting than adaptability. I wish I'd have made a better segue than this, but the connection I was going for there was that I had to adapt to a new and unexpected challenge, even while handling a bunch of other things, and you get the idea, I'm not going to quote this anymore. Referencing current events and everything you're apparently supposed to do in a valedictorian speech, and if that's the case, I sure picked the right year to graduate. You've been through a lot to get together. Well, okay, maybe not together per se, but you get the idea. And yet, in spite of it all, we're still here. By and large, we're still the same people we were before this all went down. A bit older, a bit wiser, a bit less confident about the future, sure, but mostly the same. Which makes sense, really, since that's how we managed to get this far in the first place. Think about it. Most species are pretty localized, right? Sure, some cover a pretty broad range, but they're still pretty much confined to one general area based on climate, geography, the other species living there, stuff like that. One exception to that? Us. Human beings inhabit practically every corner of the globe, and that's saying something, especially since, as a globe, it doesn't have corners. All jokes aside, it really is impressive from a biological perspective. Species that lives everywhere from the hot, dry, barren expanse of the Sahara Desert to the cold, dry, barren expanse of the Antarctic Desert. Seriously, the entire of Antarctica is a desert. You can't make this stuff up. It ventures everywhere from the peaks to the highest mountains to, well, we're still working on the deepest depth of the ocean, I suppose, but we're definitely getting there, and all the way beyond its own planet's atmosphere. And the reason behind it all is, as I mentioned, adaptability. There's a quote that sums this up rather well. It is not the most intellectual of the species that survives. It is not the strongest that survives. But the species that survives is the one that is able best to adapt and adjust to the changing environment in which it finds itself. Contrary to many claims, Darwin didn't say that. Leon Meganson, a business professor, did. But the point still stands. One of the major things that makes humans so capable is their ability to adapt to change. And this, it is this adaptability that has allowed us to conquer the world and beyond. So I guess that's the theme behind the speech. Be adaptable. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, there are some situations where you should hold your ground and changes that you should refuse to go along with, but even this is, in a sense, adapting. It's just that you're adapting the situation instead of yourself. Still, in many cases, the situation is beyond your control. This year has taught us that lesson very thoroughly so far, and will probably continue to do so for the remaining six months. So there's nothing you can really do except roll with the punches, even if those punches are coming at you from extra-dimensional directions that you can neither perceive nor comprehend. You know, I didn't really think of a good way to close this whole thing out, so you've just 
clap appreciatively as I offered to shovel off the stage and be much appreciated. And with that, I would like to introduce the retired Colonel Dickinson for the next portion of this ceremony. Okay, you lost one of your cats, I think. Dave. You're welcome. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I have the special honor to recognize those graduates who are pursuing entry in the United States Armed Forces. Our nation's success is founded on the sacrifice of generations who served in our armed forces, defending our ideals. President Reagan said, freedom is a fragile thing. It is never more than one generation away from extinction. It is not ours by inheritance. It must be fought for and defended constantly by each generation for it comes only once to a people. Those who have known freedom, then lost it, have never known it again. The individuals we are going to recognize tonight are part of the next generation who have made the decision to join the armed forces and fight for our freedoms. Soon they'll be facing the challenges of this uncertain world, but they'll jo be joining a team where no member is more important than the other, and a team that upholds the core values of integrity, loyalty, duty, respect, honor, service, courage, and commitment. At this time, it's my, my honor to introduce the graduates who are entering the armed forces. Please hold your applause until I've introduced all the candidates. And graduates, please rise when I call your name and remain standing until everyone's introduced. Joining the United States Marine Corps, Jaden Ball. Joining the United States Air Force, Joseph Di Natale. They will also be joined by Joseph Medlin, Eve Pasha, and Ethan Winter as the five from this year's class joining. I would personally like to congratulate you on your decision, one that will shape the rest of your life. You will find as you put on the uniform, you will stand a little taller. Your heart will beat a little faster with the pride of being a member in the service of our great nation. We will demand much from you, but I have no doubt of your ability to succeed. Welcome to the finest armed forces on earth, and let me be the first to salute you for accepting the call to serve your country. And now it's my honor to introduce the high school principal, Mr. Roll. Thank you, Colonel, for the introduction. Thank you for your service to this country and your service to this community. So thank you very much. This part of the script, we're gonna talk about those who had earned their honors, diplomas with highest distinction, diploma with distinction, and honors diploma. I also wanna take a moment and I wanna thank an individual that bleeds green and white, who through years as a classroom teacher, a building level administrator, a superintendent, an interim principal, and a fantastic mentor since my tenure started in February, and that is Dr. Whitney Van Tyne. I wanna thank him for his ongoing dedication, his hard work, and his love for this community. And like I said, he is always just a phone call away. He's been a fantastic mentor, so thank you very much, sir. Like I said, I have the honor of announcing those who had won diplomas with highest distinction, diploma with distinction, and honors diploma. I would ask that you hold applause. When I announce your names, please stand until the last name is read. Diploma with highest distinction is for a graduate who earned a GPA of 100% or greater during their four years here at Lewport High School. The first one is Grace Barner with a GPA of 102.46. Benjamin Cardamone with a GPA of 102.88. Joshua Cardamone with a GPA of 102.35. Jordan Casey with a GPA of 100.19. Megan Clarkson with a GPA of 100. Point two six. Emily Fatante with a GPA of 102.21. Congratulations. 
You may be seated. Thank you. For those students who earned a diploma with distinction, which is a GPA of a 98 to a 99.9, .9. Elijah Elker, Emma Andrews, Anthony Dragoni, and Jack Dunn. Congratulations and thank you for your dedication and hard work. You may now be seated. Thank you. For students who earned a honors diploma, that's a GPA of a 95 to a 97.99, Carly Bibb, Emma Beth Colangelo, Caitlin Credicott, Jenna Deutschman, Emily Dillon, and Gracie Fidelli. Congratulations to you all. Great job. To the class of 2020, what a year. As I've communicated more than a few times, there is nothing that I can say that will or can fill the void left by so many canceled senior year moments. I believe I may know just a little of how you feel, having only been your building principal for five weeks before this health-related break started. Because I missed out on many opportunities to get to know you, as my students. Even though we haven't been in the building as one Lewport family since Friday, March 13th, we've continued to aim higher, to persevere, and we succeeded. This health-related break has taught us all an important lesson. Too many times we'll find ourselves traveling down a path that wasn't or isn't by our own choosing. Who would have thought that in the 21st century we'd be living through a global pandemic? schools and much of our community closed and our known sense of normalcy altered. Each generation has, it one, has at least one defining moment. It may be a Great Depression, a global conflict, Pearl Harbor, the fall of the Berlin Wall, 9-11, or even a global pandemic, just to name a few. Throughout these crucial moments and times, many individuals didn't nor couldn't choose the path that these moments took them on. But in all, in every one of these historic moments, individuals stood tall. They persevered, accomplished goals, succeeded, and met the challenge head on. I'm proud to say that each of you are sitting here today because of your commitment, hard work, and you confronted this moment head on. You let nothing stand in your way, even a global pandemic to achieve your goal of being a high school graduate. With all that being said, I'm extremely proud to call myself a Lancer. To witness the outpouring of support from the Lewport community for our seniors, to view firsthand the prominent role that this school district plays within this community. Just one shining example would be your senior parade. The parade was absolutely one of the coolest experiments or experiences of my professional career to see hundreds, if not thousands, of community members, young and old, proudly wearing green, cheering on your accomplishments was truly amazing to see. I've always believed that schools cradle and nurture the community's greatest assets. That's each and every one of you. It's children, it's future. It is this belief that makes my job so rewarding. When I can look out from this podium today, the class of 2020 is truly historic. It's not because what you lost, but rather your shining example of perseverance and your success. The Lewport family is extremely proud of each of you, but please remember, you're always welcome home. Congratulations, thank you. Mr. Superintendent. Mr. Casseri is the principal of Lewis and Porter High School. I've reviewed the educational records of each of these young men and women and have found that they have met all requirements for graduation as established by the Lewis and Porter Board of Education and the New York State Department of Education. I now recommend them to you for your confirmation, sir. Thank you, Mr. Rolls. Mr. Rolls, as superintendent, the Lewiston Porter Central Schools 
I accept your recommendation and in accordance with the Lewiston Porter Board of Education policy and regulations established by the New York State Department of Education, I now confer upon these candidates a Lewiston Porter High School Diploma. Congratulations. At this time, I'd like to ask Ms. Amanda Burdick and Mrs. Therese Skimmon to come to the podium so that we can begin the confirm con confirmation of diplomas upon these graduates. I would like to just offer uh, just a couple of uh, guidelines here. Uh, we would need our uh, graduates to have their masks on as they're coming up. Once you get to the uh, stairs here, you can take the mask off. Your diploma will be six, uh, on a uh, podium right here. You'll take your podium, you'll take your diploma, show it to the crowd, show it to the cameras, and then you're gonna go off the stage. We have a professional photographer here that will snap your photo with your diploma, and then you may uh, return back to your seat. Um, family members, we would ask that you remain uh, in your areas. Um, we do have a professional photographer and there's certainly, it looks as though there'll be time afterwards for some photographs, uh, but we would ask that uh, the guidelines that we've established with New York State Parks that you uh, remain in the uh, in your chairs near your vehicles. This is Ms. Burdick and Ms. Skimmon. Good afternoon, uh, graduating class of 2020. We are so proud to be here and, and as your advisors. Um, I would like to ask you as you approach um, the podium to get your diploma that you bring your name card with you, please. Cole Michael Asetta. John Richard Addenbrook. Katrina E. Aiken. Cody James Alfieri. Elijah N. Alker. Emma Andrews. Isabella Aversa. Jaden P. Ball. Alyssa N. Barbiero. Kaya J. Barker. Grace Barner.
Joseph T. Beatty. Kenneth Bielman, Jr. Jack L. Bernstein. Carly Bibb. Lene Bose. Trevor T. S. Butts. Benjamin Cardamone. Joshua Cardamone. Nicholas A. Carlo. Jordan R. Casey. Hannah Cassidy. Megan K. Clarkson. Jaden Lucas Clemens. Dakota N. Converso. Daniel D. Copeland. Jason R. Coots. Cameron E. Cummings. Renee G. Damon. Madison Rose Davis. Brooke Deal. Joseph S. Dentico. Jenna Deutschman. Emily Marie Dillon. Joseph Di Natale. Anthony Dragoni. Jack Timothy Dunn. Taryn Elizabeth Dusen. Lauren Egger. Lucas R. Ute. J. 
Jack A. Ebert. Gracie Elizabeth Fideli. Savannah Fideli. Emily Claire Fatanti. Molly Flanagan. Gino Fontana Rosa. Ethan Joseph Fournier. Nathan Thomas Fournier. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the president of the class of 2020, Joseph Beatty. Hello, everybody. And thank you all for coming here today. For those who don't know me, obviously, my name is Joseph Beatty, and I have had the honor of being the class of 2020 president for the past four years. Before I begin, I would like to thank my teachers and the staff that have helped me get through the past four years. The faculty here at Lewis and Porter is the best there is, and we as a class cannot thank you all enough. To my mom and dad, I cannot thank you enough for all that you have done for me and your constant support in everything that I do. Also, I'd like to thank my brother and sisters, Paul, Lindsay, and Katie, for being the best older siblings the baby of the family can ask for. And lastly, thank you to my grandma and papa for always being there and being role models for me. To my fellow students, we finally did it. We turned in our last assignment, we ended our last Zoom call, or we got our last star 65 put in because we didn't do either of those two things. Despite all the obstacles thrown our way this year, we did it, and as your class president and on behalf of the class officers, I would like to congratulate everybody here today. The class of 2020 is a very special one, and not just because the last three months of our school year were canceled because of a pandemic. The 160 or so students that make up our class have accomplished so much, whether it be academically, athletically, musically, you name it, our class has excelled in it. In the world of athletics, members of our class have won sectional, state, and NFL championships, the Powder Puff Championship, finally. They've made all NFL, all state, and have been named scholar athletes. Traveled down the music wing, and our students have been accepted into various all-county, area all-state, and conference all-state ensembles as well as participating in many festivals at the county and state levels, and also dozens of concerts and musicals. Not to mention programs and clubs like BOCES, DECA, Business Academy, Lancer Council, Yearbook, Art Clubs and Masterminds, Foreign Language, goes on and on, and many more where students are given the chance to do what they love and excel at it. Each member of the class of 2020 has their own unique combination of activities, experiences, and relationships that shape them into the person that they are today. For me, one of the most influential experiences during my time at Lewis and Porter was my decision to join the soccer team. My coaches, Mr. Sweeney and Mr. Bollinger, taught me and my teammates commitment, teamwork, hard work, and determination. And these lessons taught us how to succeed both on and off the field. I'll always be grateful for my coaches, teammates, and the memories that we made together. My time with the music department at Lewport has been one of the most rewarding experiences during my years in high school, and I almost quit in seventh grade. For the past seven years, yes, seven years, I've had the privilege of having Miss Burdick as my band teacher, and she has had the privilege of dealing with me on a daily basis. On a serious note, I couldn't imagine my time at Lewport without Miss Burdick. She works tirelessly, not only for the band, but also for our class. And no matter how much me, Anthony Dragoni, and Jack Dunn annoyed her, she was always there to give advice, make sandwiches, or do anything that we might have needed during the school day, and I can say that I couldn't have survived without her. 
last August, all I could think about was the fun experiences that I'd be having around this time. Class day, prom, and the senior trip are just a few of the things that me and my classmates sadly lost to Corona. No one could have imagined that everything would happen the way it did, but here we are, and like I said, the class of 2020 is a special one, and we will learn from all of this. Even in times of disappointment and uncertainty, the community has had our back. The support from family, friends, and even people that we've never met before has been outstanding. The adopt a senior program, the Ransomville Fire Company stopping by our house, the senior parade set up by our school and police department are just a few examples of how powerful and meaningful positivity can be to people in dark times. This pandemic gave everybody two options. You could either sit and pout about what you lost, or you could focus on making yourself better and stronger than you were before. And I'm not gonna lie, for the first month and a half or so, the quarantine kind of broke me. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate. But my time in this area is ending soon as I leave for Ohio in a couple of months. And I finally decided to use this time to create memories I'll never forget. Some seniors were asked to submit quotes for the commencement program today. And I think mine is a perfect one for the situation we are in. Super Bowl champion and MVP Patrick Mahomes, you like that Nikki Carlo? Said, every experience, good or bad, you have to learn from. And I believe our class has and will continue to learn from every experience, both the good and the bad. We are resilient, dynamic, caring, and willing to take on the challenges life throws our way. And I can't wait to see how far we will go in the next 10 years and beyond. To my fellow classmates, I'd like to congratulate you all one more time for making it here. And I'd like to thank you for being the best class I could ever hope to belong to. Thank you everyone for coming here today. I hope everyone has a great and memorable summer. Once a Lancer, always a Lancer. Now I would like to introduce seniors Lauren Egger, Nathan Fournier, and Olivia Ponticelli and their accompanist, Mr. Burt, performing You'll Never Walk Alone.
Would the members of the class of 2020 please stand? Now, would you all please move your tassels from the right to the left? And please remain standing for the singing of the alma mater. To the Lewiston Porter swells a strain of honor true. Hallowed halls, we look to thee for a path to guide us through. In our hearts will ever be freedom, wisdom, honesty, home of our alma mater, home of our alma mater. Lamps of knowledge burn inside and go brighter through the years. Day by day grows student pride for the school we love so dear. We salute the green and white, banners proud and ever bright. Home of our alma mater, home of our alma mater. To the Lewiston Porter, our hearts will ever be true. Though we may be far away, we will pledge ourselves anew. Near Niagara's flowing might, we'll uphold your honor bright. Home of our alma mater. Home of our alma mater. How about a round of applause one more time for our senior vocalists? Fantastic job, the three of you. Fantastic. I also want to just take a moment and thank the staff that are here today chaperoning, but also the staff that worked all morning long to make sure uh, that the stage and the area looks as beautiful as it does. So thank you very much for that. That concludes our ceremony for today. Uh, when we release, now you are being released proudly as graduates of this fantastic school district. I wish you all the best. Congratulations um, and all your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you to the families as well. Thank you. Folks, you can return to your, your cars. Uh, we did very well on time, so we've got about maybe five or ten minutes. Please follow the direction of the Art Park staff. Uh, you're going to be, uh, we're going to start up in this corner and just start to flow out first row, second row, so to, so to speak, but certainly a little bit of time here for some photographs. Uh, please make sure that you are masked and socially distance appropriate uh, as you are engaging with each other. Thank you. <laughs>